Was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we are going to be continuing our deep dive into the Transformers trading card game by having a look at Jetfire, who I like to call the Forgotten Plane. But here's what's super weird about Jetfire, right? It's the only Autobot plane. So when I had a look at my FAQ, I'll link to that one in the description, I told you how you can mix Autobots and Decepticons, which has been, you know, it's been a little bit controversial in some people's eyes since the game was revealed and released and all of that. And part of the reason why you have to be able to mix them is because Jetfire is the only Autobot plane. But is it actually any good? Because I've told you, right, as far as I'm concerned, I've got my free wide plane deck. I'm going Starscream because when you flip it into alt mode, you get to do damage to an enemy equal to the number of other planes you have. That's two. I'm playing Thundercracker because when you flip it into alt mode, you get to do two damage to a melee character. And given that they add up to 19, I'm playing Skywarp purely because it's a six cost and I really need to have three planes in my deck. It's nothing more exciting than that. So I've got my free wide. And if we have a look at this, Jetfire is a 10 cost, which means essentially you've got to replace like Starscream if you want to make a free wide plane deck. Or you play it with Starscream, but then you've got 21 stars and you can't play anything else, which is a little bit of an issue. So you can play it in a planes deck. Of course you can. But I don't think it's the optimal plane deck. So, let's have a quick look at it and see how it can be used. Well, it's a 10 cost. 10 cost is expensive. It's more than the average of 8. But the health of 15 is nuts good. There are only two characters in the game at the moment that have a health of 16 or more. They are Nemesis Prime and Autobot Cosmos. Everything else, 15 or less. So, your health here is great. Defense is not particularly good. One in alt mode, one in bot mode, yowza. That's not good, but as we're going to see in a minute, it's largely irrelevant. And the attack is four in bot mode, which is the average. And five in alt mode, which is, I'm sure you guys can do the basic maths here, one above average. Okay. So, how do we use this? Well, it all comes down to the skills. Now, in alt mode, you've got bold one, flip one more battle card when attacking. That's kind of nice. You can do something with that. But actually here, it's bot mode that makes me super happy. When you flip to this mode, put an armor or utility from your scrap pile onto this character. So, you get to essentially continually have new utilities and armor etc and anyone that's been watching these videos will know i'm instantly thinking of force field i think jetfire force field is a wonderful wonderful combo and even though jetfire doesn't fit into my standards plane deck i still love it now this is an armor and essentially it guarantees you can only take four damage but what's brilliant here is that you can keep having it because there's two bad things about force field, right? Number one, you could end up flipping it when you're attacking or defending, meaning you don't get it. And number two, there's a whole bunch of hate for upgrade cards. So you've got ramming speed, which just lets you scrap an enemy upgrade, which is a bit of a pain. And then you've got Megatron Decepticon Leader, which when you flip it into alt mode, you can scrap a card from your hand and then scrap an enemy upgrade which is a little bit of a pain. Not to mention disruption here that lets you look at your opponent's hand and scrap an upgrade from it. So you end up in this awkward position where you're playing this amazing card force field, but there's a bunch of different ways that your opponent can get it into the scrap pile. But Jetfire doesn't matter. If you draw into it normally, attach it to Jetfire. If you end up in the scrap pile, flip it into bot mode, and then get it out the scrap pile using the skill. And your opponent has to basically KO you the turn they get rid of it. Because if they don't get rid of it with, say, ramming speed and then KO you, you can just get it back. And it's not just the skill that gets force field back over and over again that excites me. Although it does. It's the fact that you've got 15 health. 
which means you've inevitably got a bit of survivability here before you just reuse it every single turn. So in terms of partners, we've mentioned the planes, but there's a couple others I quite like. RC Skilled Warrior is a 5 cost. When you flip it to this mode, you get to, that's being alt mode, repair 1 damage from each of your characters. That's a bit of healing as well, which goes a long way in a card like this where you've really got some survivability. And I quite like Flame War here, which gives you bold 1 when you flip into alt mode, which goes well with your bold in alt mode. And then when it's in bot mode, each of your characters has tough one. Hopefully this won't be particularly exciting because you'll just be using force field constantly. But if you don't, tough one comes in handy. And then you're actually at a stage where you've got three characters that are adding up to 20. At which point you play kickback. Now I'm going to be honest with you. Kickback, not a good card to randomly tech into a deck. In bot mode, you flip two more battle cards for each other Insecticon you began the game with when you're attacking. Well, that's no good. You don't have any other Insecticons. And when you damage an enemy in alt mode, you repair one damage from one of your Insecticons. At least you can, you know, heal Kickback. Kickback is built to be in an Insecticon deck, right? But... That's fine. You, you're literally just playing a fourth character. It is the only other five cost. What can you do, ladies and gentlemen? What can you do? Now, there is also an Optimus Prime here, Freedom Fighter, which has got bold too. So it does fit with the whole bold theme in bot mode. And when you flip it to alt mode, you repair one damage from each of your Autobots which would include Jetfire. Issue is that is a 12 cost, which means the two of them together would be 22, and you wouldn't have a third character that could plug that gap for the moment. We think the Metroplex deck is going to bring us some free cost characters, that's my prediction, but until we actually get it, we won't know for certain. Do check that video out though, there'll be a link in the description. But the thing is, it's just a generally good 10 cost which can just abuse force field. And that's what I love about it. I don't think it's one of these characters that has to go in a particular deck. I think it's one of these that is a good card that you could tech into a whole bunch of different decks as long as you're playing force field. I think if you're not playing force field with Jetfire, I mean, yes, of course there's other things that you can do here. I'm just not really a fan of any of them. I should mention here that it is a ranged character, so you do get a couple of extra upgrades that you can use. You do have armed hovercraft, though it is a weapon, but when you put it on a ranged character, you do one damage to each enemy. That sounds pretty gosh darn good. And we do have rapid ascent here, which I do actually like. Now, this is an armor. And it gives you plus one defense, and when you put it on a ranged character, your opponent chooses a card from their hand and scraps it. So you could play a deck with this, where you play free Rapid Ascent, and you just play a little bit of Disruption, where you try and just attach Rapid Ascent as often as you possibly can. I mean, you've always got cards like Rollout and Rapid Conversion, which give you the option to essentially flip extra characters to try and use skills like this a little bit more often. Thing is, when you run out of cards in this game, you just shuffle your scrap pile and it becomes your deck. So I don't think Disruption is a particularly viable strategy. So it's not something I'm going to wholeheartedly recommend, though it is an option. And being that you are a plane, you do have a couple of specific cards for planes. Bombing Run moves one damage counter from each of your planes to one of your opponent's characters. Problem is, when you're only playing one plane, you're really not making the most of that. And there is an upgrade card purely for planes here. It is Aerial Recon, and it gives you an extra defense. It's a utility, so again, you can use the skill to get this. And when you attack or defend, you look at the top card of your deck and you may scrap it. Which is really good, because if you're defending and you see an orange icon, scrap it. You're attacking, you see a blue icon, scrap it. It's a nice little thing, but again, I would rather have a force field here. Now, Aerial Recon is a utility, whereas force field is an armor, which is nice. 
but I'm thinking specifically about using the skill here, and you're not always going to be able to get utility and the armor here, and I think you really do need to go force field. And of course, if you've got bold one, there are ways to essentially bold up a little bit. Supercharge gives one of your characters bold three until the end of the turn, which is quite nice. Flamethrower gives you bold two, and they really are the best ones. I mean, yeah, I suppose Power Sword gives you bold three, but you're not a melee character, so that's kind of a moot point. And just before we finish here, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, you can make a free wide plane deck using Jetfire here. Because that's a 10 cost, Skywarp is a 6 cost, Slipstream is an 8 cost, and that together would be 24. I don't think Skywarp's an amazing card, and... I mean, look, Slipstream's not bad for an 8 cost. When you attack in bot mode, you flip at least three different icons. You get plus three attack. That's all right. Six attack on an eight cost is good. And in alt mode, when one of your planes attacks, you move one damage counter from it to the defender. Now, that could actually be really good. If you are doing the whole force field thing, you take four damage, you move it over. And if you're going for the force field, don't forget that we do have some decent options for repairing here. Repair Bay repairs one damage from each of your characters, which is quite nice here. Medic will repair two damage from one of your characters. Emergency Maintenance repairs one damage from one of your characters, but free if you've got more stars in the KO area than the battlefield. And one that I actually do like quite a lot here, and it's not a card that I often like, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> Generally speaking, I'm not a fan of Salvage for Parts. But you scrap all upgrades and repair one damage from each character for each upgrade scrapped from it. And what I like here is you can scrap all your upgrades, including force field, use it to heal. But then as long as you just immediately flip back into bot mode, you can then get the force field right back and you're rolling. I don't think there is a best way to play Jetfire at the moment other than abusing force field. I really do feel very strongly about that. You can play it in a free wide planes deck. You can play it in a four wide with the three five cost characters and there's a million other different combinations you can use. But I do think it has a lot of potential and I didn't want to just go right well there's only one way to play planes it's these three like we said at the beginning. I think there is a lot more adaptability here. And I think Jetfire is just the beginning. So you know the deal at this stage, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me what you think about Jetfire in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the very important rule to be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy for some more rambling. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.